Dude, I broke my phone. In today's video, we are going to go over why I don't recommend that you de-Google your own device. In front of you, what you see is a Motorola G8, and this was the phone that I was supposed to use as what I was calling my normie crutch. Basically, this was going to be my notification device for YouTube videos when I happened to be at my desk. This wasn't a completely virgin phone. I had spent a lot of time tweaking it. Back in around October, my friends and I went up to hang out, and one of my friends was de-googling his phone, which was a Google Pixel. And he encouraged me to do the same thing with this device. Over the course of investigation, some of the people on XDA forums recommended that I would need to root the phone in order to install a version of Lineage OS. Back in early 2020, this phone was actually developed for by the XDA developers, but that was based on the Android 9 model. Around October, Motorola released an update for Android 10, and Android 10 broke a piece of software that XDA uses for their setups with open source Android. Usually, XDA will not develop for anything that does not have a twerp setup, which is the piece of software that they want you to use to load in custom ROMs. When they said that, I attempted to root this device to install twerp. They said, if you root the device, you can install twerp, and then you can install Lineage OS. This actually was not true. So this device was rooted for several months, which meant that I couldn't install any of the separate Android security patches which were released. They needed to be installed manually. When most people say, that they have bricked their phone, what they're saying is that they corrupted the baseband. And really quick, for people who don't know anything about telecommunications, from what I understand, baseband is a portion of the radio wave. When people transmit radio waves over the air or over a wire using electronic signaling, they can send the full band. And what you see in front of you on the screen right here is what that full band looks like. The thing about sending a full band is it's incredibly wasteful of the bandwidth you have over whatever kind of wire or radio frequency that you're trying to send things over. So what they do to compress this at a hardware level before they ever send anything, because bandwidth is incredibly expensive, is they decide which part of the band they want to send over the air. Ham radio operators will typically send things via sideband. So if you study for your ham radio license, one of the things they're going to want you to learn is what lower sideband is or upper sideband. And we, we've got these right here on the left and right. When the receiver on the other end knows which part of the band you're sending, they're able to reconstruct the entire band on their receiving device and then they can understand what you're saying and they can understand what the frequency actually says. In most cases they use frequency modulation, which I'm not going to go deeply into for the purpose of this video. For those brick devices, when they have corrupted baseband's, I assume that this means that they've overwritten the part in the chip that controls what frequency the baseband is sent on. So if the computer doesn't understand what frequency it's supposed to send and receive on, the device will no longer work. In my case, that is not at all what happened. They say that there's more than one way to skin a cat, and this holds true for bricking a phone as well. In the process of unrooting, or before I went through the process of unrooting, for some reason, I disabled developer mode on my phone. And I'm going to restart the phone really quick and show you what I'm talking about. On the screen, you see me booted into the bootloader. I'm going to point 
to Tools Mode Config, and you can see that that is disabled. Based on my research, for some reason, either I disabled Developer Mode, or I forgot to re-enable it after I rooted and wiped this phone completely clean. This is incredibly bad because it means that a portion of flashing is not available to me. So now that this device is in a corrupted state, there's no way for me to actually patch that because some of the tools that I need to correct the error are not available. There is still one more tool out there that I can try on this device, and I will try to get the phone operational again, if for no other reason than just as an experiment test bed. But I don't really care that much, and the reason is, is I still have an old phone, and this is a Motorola G6. I got this on sale for $10 cheaper than normal because it's a pink rose gold, and I don't really care what color it is. So I still have my Normie crutch available to me. The phone on the right was a bit of an expensive mistake, but that is one of the things that helps you learn. You learn more from your failures than you do from your successes because you understand what you did wrong and it helps you to do the right thing in the future. If you are willing to make sacrifices to learn how to install custom ROMs on phones, I would encourage you to do so only in the case that you can afford to make these mistakes or in cases where you are really trying to develop skills that will help you to become more technologically self-reliant. That is a major focus of this channel. I've been talking a lot about de-googling because using Silicon Valley tools in general make us dependent. And being able to do a lot of these things on our own using free and open standards is going to help us move into the future and to help promote our own independence and freedom. And by freedom, of course, I don't mean that we can do whatever we want because freedom isn't free. It's actually very expensive. And that's kind of the lesson that I want you to take away from this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.